Hello, chess family. It's me, National Master Jesse James, and today we're going to be doing a recap of San Antonio City Championship 2022. Here we have some very nice games and also just some positions I wanted to just call out. Um, this year was won by, well, myself taking home the trophy, but I also have two co-champions with me, Greg Stanley and the youngest uh, city champion in history. We have Yashwag Raju. So I'm very happy to announce that, and we're going to see a few games with him, and I'll even be doing a special segment with his uh, by himself. With that being said, let's take a look at some games here. In our first round, we have Charles Davis versus Eddie Paul. And well, this is a very nice game by Eddie. Let's take a look and see how this goes. We start up with E4, D5. Eddie always likes to play his Scandinavian. He's definitely part of the uh, Scandi team. E takes, Queen takes. Knight C3, Queen to D6. Knight to E2. This is a very interesting way that that Charles plays. Charles is definitely one of my favorite players in San Antonio. Although maybe he's not the highest rated, he definitely is the most creative, and that's why I like to see his games. So he does play a very interesting line against the Scandinavian. Knight f6, g3, c6, bishop g2, bishop g4, castles, and e5 here. And I've worked with Eddie a little bit, and um, well, after the game, he was very happy to say that he played the c5 move. This c5 move is a perfect move here because it's trying to get control over this d4 square. Now, Charles should be looking to play pawn to d4 here by himself, or maybe in pawn h3 to kick the bishop out the way. With that being said, he doesn't, and he goes ahead and plays d3, and now it's black is in the driver's seat because, well, if you can't play d4 here, well, it's gonna you're gonna just have less space here. And a takes advantage of this very nicely. Knight b to d7, knight to e4, queen to c7. Bishop b3, knight to d5, bishop d2, pawn to h6, and pawn to h3. Bishop h5, pawn g4. Be careful about pushing pawns in front of your king. Um, there's nothing saying that Eddie's going to be going ahead and castling kingside. So, well, bishop g6, just playing it nice and slow, and c4. Here again, Charles just gets a little too aggressive for my taste here. The c4 move seems um, good for a moment because it does attack the knight. With that being said, you do create a backwards pawn here. And Eddie just can, continues to take this nice and slow. Knight to f6, knight takes, knight takes. Pawn to d4, and now the best move for, for black. What do you play? Of course, you're going to take, take, making this knight now undefended, and then castles queenside. I think at this point, Charles realized what a bad decision this was to play like this. And yeah, this knight is just very hard here because, well, the pins are just everywhere around here with the queen right at the end of it. All right, knight c2. Knight to e4, and this is really the move that's just, yeah, uh, putting the nail in the, in, in the coffin, right? Um, here, Charles really has no other choice unless he wants to lose a piece just to go ahead and play bishop takes on e4. And after bishop takes on e4, well, this bishop's looking great here. This pin is still right here. Oof, the game does not last much longer. Queen c1 trying to get out of the pin. Rook to d3, a nice little tempo move, already aiming at, F, uh, at h3. Obviously, f3 can't get played unless you want to lose it. Bishop f4, a nice little tempo move trying to attack the queen. Unfortunately here, yeah, this just does not work out. Queen to d8, not the best move here. Can you spot the best move here? Remember, develop your pieces. Here I'm surprised Eddie did not play bishop to d6 here, bringing out another piece and just keeping up the attack here. Well, his plan does go pretty well though. After this bishop f4, queen d8, Eddie plays. Knight e3, unfortunately this was another bad move by Charles. Queen f6, tempo. And the bad part about this is if the queen gets to f3, well, it's pretty much game over. And, well, bishop g3 was played. Queen f3. Now the checkmate threat is on g2, so rook takes e3 is being threatened. King to h2. And, of course, simple chess. Rook takes on e3. Rook to g1 to stop it. And Eddie does not uh, relent. He keeps pushing very hard here. Rook e2. Queen f1. And the final, uh, final uh, piece here. What does he play? Black to move. What is Black's strongest move here? After this move, White went ahead and resigned. Hopefully he found it. Bishop to d6. Finally getting this bishop out and putting a pin on here with rook takes f2. A threat that really just can't be stopped unless you're going to be giving up another exchange. Very, very nice attacking game by Eddie here. All right, on to the next one. We're going to jump over to my game. It was a very, very long and uh, strenuous game. And I was playing against Adrian, one of my good friends from the Valleys area. And um, I was up an extra piece here. I just was having a very hard time converting. I was still trying to find the idea behind this one because, well, um, I wasn't too sure 
of, of the idea. I was thinking I was I was trying to go into a winning king upon endgame with this. You know, computer is giving this as a you know negative six to here, and one of the ideas is queen takes on f2 check. I just wasn't too sure on my king upon endgame here. Something I have to brush up on. So well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happened because this did end a draw. Queen f4, king f1, and here well my uh, well to me it's a losing move. Queen to f3, and uh, hopefully you see it. Adrian did not. Waste too much time to play this move. White to move and get the draw. What do you play here? Of course, just a queen to d2 check, attacking both the king and the bishop. We are both surviving off inf increment as this was a game uh, 90 with 30 second increment. And we were both down just to our increment, su surviving 30 seconds each move. And, uh, yep, I missed this move. And my first round was going to be a draw against uh, the very strong Adrian Diaz. We continue for a few more moves. I played bishop b3, takes, takes, takes. King g5. And then at this point, it's just it's a pretty easy draw here. It's it's impossible to win this pawn without this king uh, winning this pawn. All right, good job, Adrian. On to the next game. Here we see the youngest city champion against one of our oldest city champions. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, at least at least still uh, active players here, Greg Stanley. And here, Greg shows very good prestige, very good move here. Can you find out the best move here for White? This throws White's uh, this throws the axe game off, and he does not recover. He ends up losing this game after getting a very uh, bad strategic position. Remember, I do encourage you to push pause if you want to. If not, enjoy the show. Here, Greg found the beautiful knight to g5 here, which I'm pretty sure he's played here before. Knight g5 comes with a really strong idea, threatening to either win the bishop pair, but also playing e takes d5 here. Yak played the best he could. He went ahead and played knight, um, well, he went ahead and took pawn takes and then played knight takes on b4 here. C takes b4, bishop f5. And although these pawns look a little bit weird right here, it's the backwards pawn and the bishop pair that's going to be winning this game pretty nicely here. Uh, Yak's bishop pair obviously is uh, not doing as well as his. Here Stanley just keeps playing good chess. Bishop b3, knight b6, knight to c5 here, rook b8, queen b3. Now everything's pretty much guarded, and yep, white just has extra space here. g4, rook c1, queen d6, a4, rook to d8, knight e4, kicking the queen back. Obviously, if you take here, well, this is just going to make this a very nice pawn structure. And again, it's this backward C pawn that is really holding this game uh, for black. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight to d7. Fixing the pawn structure was definitely not the best move for Yak. Queen c4, rook c8, rook to d1, and pawn b6. Another weak, weak idea. Here, Yak is trying to survive off his tactics and unfortunately this is not a tactical position this is a strategic position of course he's hoping for this queen takes a6 so that he can get crazy and play something like queen takes b4 although white is still better in this position um greg is not going to allow this to happen rook b1 knight b8 now you see that c6 and a6 are covered but again white just has their um all day to uh, keep improving their position bishop f1 pawn f5 finally the the young lion cannot take it anymore and he just attacks and, well, the old line is ready for it. Bishop g5, rook e8, pawn 2 h3, just chipping away. King h7, pawn takes f4. Well, yeah, there's uh, you don't really want to take on e4 or onto g4 here, as this is just going to make your pawn structure even weaker. So you have to choose the latter. Pawn to f4, king g2, looking to bring the rook to the h file, which is pretty much just going to be giving white a very strong attack. Pawn f3 check. Yak is trying to mix things up. Unfortunately, Stanley is too strong and too solid for, to allow this to uh, mix mix him up. Free pawn's a free pawn. King takes on f3. C6. Pawn takes, queen check. King g2, rook takes. Queen to d5. Bishop h6. Bishop takes, king takes. Bishop takes on a6. A nice little tactic here, winning a pawn. And also allowing the rook to slide over to the h-file to attack the king. Rook to f6. Pawn to g5 here, best move and a very strong idea. Here, king takes on g5. And here, surprisingly enough, um, he did not play the strongest move. Can you find the strongest move here for white? It's a plus 12 advantage here. White to move. Stanley actually missed this idea. Hopefully, you found it. Here, it was actually queen to d2 check, attacking the king, so the king cannot retreat. At this point, you just have to play something like rook f4, which is pretty much good to resign now. Um, Stanley still finds a, still a very strong move here. Pawn to f4 check, obviously can't take back, and the game ends with, oops, back over there to Stanley's game. Uh, pawn f4 check, king to h6, bishop b5 tempo, rook e7, 
rook to c1. Not the cleanest way to win here, but still winning nonetheless. Pawn takes, pawn g4, g5, and now the game ended really fast with rook h1 check, king g6, and rook to h5. Here there's no good way to stop this. Queen takes g5 check idea, and uh, yeah, the game's pretty much over at this point. On to the next game. Here we have another fun position with Yak. This time, he's playing against his opponent of Charles Davis. And, well, at this moment, Charles had just played pawn f5, and Yak plays the beautiful rook to g1 here. Okay? Charles is like, um, can't I just play e4 forking? He does that, and unfortunately, it loses the game very fast. Queen g3 gets played. Rook f7 is forced. Obviously, you cannot take on d3 as rook takes g7. Knight takes g7, queen takes g7's check and mate. So he goes ahead and plays rook f7. And now the bishop reroutes perfectly uh, perfectly on time. Bishop b2, knight takes d5, last blunder of the game, and uh, bishop to h5 attacking the rook. But the real idea is to get rid of this knight. Here, Charles went ahead and played rook c7, thinking he's making a threat. This is not a threat. Bishop takes on e8, and it's game over now. If queen takes again, we're going to be seeing a checkmate in four here. Rook takes g7. Rook takes g7 would just lead to a quick checkmate on g7. So I guess you'd have to run your king over. It doesn't matter which way you run. King of eight is the best way. And uh, queen takes on d6 check. Knight to e7. Rook g8 check. King f7. And a beautiful mate here. Um, after the move, a bishop takes e8 though. Uh, Charles went ahead and threw in the towel. A very nice um, game by Yak attacking. All right, on to another one. I'm not sure if Yak realized you don't have to win your games in less than 30 moves or less than 30 minutes. A lot of he played a lot of miniatures and attached really fast. You don't get any extra points for that, Yak, but, um, you know, good good job on winning your games. Here we see a game with Alfredo Garcia, and unfortunately for Alfredo, he's playing with the white pieces here. He just falls for a very easy trap, and Yak is relentless and just attacks him until he cannot uh, stand it anymore. Here, unfortunately for Alfredo, he plays pawn to h3, and Yak makes him pay. Black to move. What do you play here to keep adding pressure? Hopefully you found it. Knight d4 got played, and your king side is in ruins. Queen d1, knight check, pawn takes, bishop takes, rook to e1, and now Yak sets up a very nice king side attack. Pawn h6. I'm not sure if this is really needed, but um, I guess he was trying to stop this bishop g5 idea from happening. King h2 attacking the bishop. Bishop back to f5. Rook to g1. Nice little idea here. Trying to get attack on the h6 pawn. Yak simply plays king h8. Nice and reserved. He, he will finish his attack after everything is nice and neat. I guess he must have a good coach to teach him these kind of good ideas. <laughs> Queen f1. Knight to h5. Here they come. All the pieces are starting to rally up against this king. This knight move is very important as it's getting control over this f4 square. Knight takes d5. Everything is according to plan, as he says. Bishop d6 check with the real idea of allowing the queen to come to h4 here. This was not a free pawn. All right, rook to g3. All right, when you see a good move, look for a better one. Queen h4 check, king to g1. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. Oof, these two bishops and the queen are just too much, and this king does not have enough defenders here. Queen g2 was played. Bishop h3. Queen to h1 and game over. Can you find the final idea? It's checkmate in two here. All right, hopefully you found it. It was just bishop f2 check. And at this point, well, Alfredo went ahead and resigned here. After king h2, it's just queen to g3 for check and mate. All right, back to my corner. Here I got to play against Prasanna. He was one of the leading uh, players in this tournament. He actually ends up tying for first place, uh, taking out uh, Eddie uh last round if Eddie would have won his game against Prasada he would have actually taken first place by himself for the San Antonio City Championship well Prasada unfortunately in this game blunders with his last move of pawn to b4 black to move can you see it all right I hope he pushed pause I hope he tried to find the move here ho hopefully you found the idea here we're going to go ahead and play knight takes on e4 here and uh wait a second can't we just take back here well, you can. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work too well. After bishop takes e4, you have the nice in-between move. Rook takes c4, or a double attack move here, attacking both the bishop and the queen. And after this, well, there's really no good move here. Computers are just saying, yeah, you should pretty much just give up your queen at this point, which is what I was expecting. Uh, queen takes, pawn takes, but this is just not enough in this position. Rook takes on c4, and yeah, lots of moves you could play here. Bishop, bishop takes on h3, bishop b5. A lot of active ways to play. 
Of course, Persana did not play this move. Instead, after knight takes on e4, he went ahead and just played bishop f4. The game did not last too long after this, though. Um, I just went back to f6, bishop g5. Now I took on c4 again, queen f2, and now the final move here to kill mostly all the counterplay here. It looks like white has a very nice attack going right here. He might win back a pawn. Well, simple chess here. Let's make some trades. I went ahead and just played knight e4, making another trade and getting out of this pin. Bishop takes on e4, queen takes on g5, rook takes on c4, pawn takes on c4. I'm just up two clean pawns here, and after bishop g2, bishop f5, he went ahead and threw, threw in the towel. All right, now for our last game here. This was Eddie versus Prasanna, and, and this was an important game because, well, again, if Eddie won this game, he would have taken first place by himself. Eddie had the white pieces and unfortunately falls for a basic trap. I, I think it was just nerves, and, you know, this was, I think, Eddie's first time playing for first place in city championship i told him after the game you know my first time that i played for city championship i played against selby i think i was like oh gosh i think i sacked a piece for like three or four, i think i ended up getting like five pawns or something like that it was a really really crazy game but i just didn't have the um <laughs> the strength or the uh the veteranness in it to actually win that game and yeah unfortunately for eddie he did, was not able to uh, withstand the pressure here too here we see d4 knight f6 knight f3 c5 e3 g6 Bishop d3, d5. Here, Eddie's playing his Kali uh, Zugzwart system. Pawn to b3. C takes d4, e takes d4, knight c6. Bishop b2, a6. Knight b d2, and this was the bad move. Well, any good Kali player will know this. Black to move. What do you play here to get a nice little advantage? Of course, the idea here is knight to b4, saying, hey, you're wasting time with this bishop move. And unfortunately for Eddie, he did not handle this correctly. He goes ahead and plays bishop b2, and now, oof, negative 3 advantage. Black to move. Let's keep this going. What do you play here? Again, this is a very common trap that Eddie actually plays himself. It's always sad whenever this happens when you fall for your own traps that you set up against. And I wish I can say I've never done it myself, but I've definitely done this myself. Bishop f5, and there's no good way to stop the knight takes c2 check. Here, rook c1 was played to stop it, but knight takes a2 gets played. Perfect temple attack in the rook. Rook back to a1, knight to b4, rook to c1, and Prasanna just plays perfectly here. Rook over to c8, developing with the threat, and again attacking c2. Here, pawn to c4 gets played, and bishop h6, another very nice move here, just developing with the threat here. I'm not sure if I would have played this personally, although this is computer's top move. I might have actually gone knight to d3 check here, as I cannot help wanting to take this bishop pair and hopefully stop him from castling. With that being said, Persona played the best move by computer. Bishop h6 castles, and well, after castles here, bishop c3, the final blunder of the game, knight a2, and black is at least, uh, uh, white is at least losing the exchange. And being down a pawn and position, Eddie just goes ahead and throws in the towel. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this nice little recap. I'll be doing a few more videos of my own personal games and also uh, the full games of Yak uh, Yak in this tournament become the youngest San Antonio City champion at 12 years old. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.